Google uh, Cloud, they were a late arriver into the public cloud scene uh, after Microsoft and after AWS, uh, but they are rapidly growing on a percentage uh, basis. And I would say that on average, I talk to a major enterprise once a week. Uh, and a lot of the times they will use, they might use AWS or Azure as their primary cloud, but then they will more than not use a Google data or AI service. And, and that's where um, Google is doing a fine job landing and expanding. And I think if you look at the needs of retail, so first of all, retail is a little bit spooked uh, about AWS and that Amazon is a huge retailer and they own AWS. Uh, but I, I see Google really getting a lot of traction there because they're able to leverage the, uh, their data capabilities and AI capabilities to solve uh, real problems. And whether that's you know, related to frontline, you know, getting people to work uh, in in frontline capabilities or enabling them to work smarter or allowing the people at HQ to make smarter decisions on um, what to provide, uh, what to do when you get a stock out, uh, how to uh, not have a stock out through really great and, and amazing uh, forecasting. And that's kind of the backdrop between uh, uh, behind, I would say, um, you know, three um, announcements that Google brought to the table. Uh, uh, one, you know, one leveraged Vertex AI Vision. Uh, the other one was updating Discovery AI. And the third was its recommendations uh, AI. But you can imagine uh, shelf checking AI, right? It's very simple, right? It used to be the days that you would send an army of people down an aisle way. I don't know if you ever worked in a grocery store, Daniel, Daniel with uh, yeah. little guns humble, humble. to, you know, count how many boxes of Cheerios uh, were on the shelf. When I worked in a, um, when I worked in a factory, we did that in our, in our inventory system, but it's called a cycle count. And you got there and do this. Why not have a robot or a smartphone that you can wave in front of, the aisle to tell you how many boxes of 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 cheerios are i mean it makes perfect perfect sense i mean it can use um uh cameras that are in the ceiling it can use an associate mobile phone or even a store roaming uh robot the second is something that you know we used to call kind of clicks to bricks or bricks to clicks which is transforming uh, the digital window shopping uh, experience, essentially making uh, the search experience for products and discovery process uh, so good that um, you're more than likely to buy that product. And the third is a more personalized search and browsing results with machine learning. So imagine that Google optimizing uh, search, but that gives you a flavor. And Daniel, I'm sure that uh, you got hit in the face with, you know, all of these demos when you were there for, I don't know, 18 hours or or 24 hours. But net net, it's Google transforming uh, the retail environment, either on site or uh, in the cloud and on the web, using technologies that they're pretty good at, really good at. Yeah, you made a good point. Um, more broadly speaking, Google is the ultimate got in by multi-cloud value. You know, their some of their data tools and services are just stand out. And for the yeah. longest time, they found themselves side by side and they're getting a fraction of the overall cloud spend, but their data and AI technologies have led to a lot of lo logos that are, that are running on Google. Now, let's just, you know, we'll talk more about NRF Friday, but NRF is, legitimately a tech show. You walk in and it's Microsoft, SAP, Google, IBM, Cisco, Dell, or I mean, you just get hit in the face by tech companies. That's it's a tech show. The future of retail is technology. There are a few, you know, the zebras, by the way, they call themselves zebra technology. Uh, didn't you used to work for NCR some thousand years ago? Pat? Yeah, a long time ago. They yeah. still have a booth. 
pretty big one actually. It's still a pretty big thing for them. But the um, the the net net of it is is the future of retail is technology driven. You know, we remember the just walk out technology with uh, Amazon, the frictionless shopping. I think a lot of what I came to recognize this year is that we're actually going to see the analytics of the in-store experience start to match the analytics of an e-commerce experience. And this is the big thing that's been missing is, as everyone likes e-commerce because of data, you can do eye tracking and screen and behavior and time on page. Well, guess what? With a camera and a good AI system, you can actually do the exact same thing with a person in a store. A little bit weird to know you're being watched, but if you don't know you're being watched by now, you're a little bit weird. Um, you need to pay attention <laughs> to what's going on in this world. Um, I love the shelf checking technology, Pat. I mean, look, I'm sorry for the frontline worker because this is going to be bad news for you. But if your career is counting the number of chicken noodle soup cans, there is going to be a time in the future where a sensor and a camera are going to be able to do that better and faster and more real time than you. This is where companies like Google come in. It's not as easy as everyone thinks. It's not, you know, building that kind of technology is not going to be cut and dry, but what um google's doing is it is going to become an enabler and cloud services yeah. that retailers can apply and they're going to be able to start doing these things with very little friction um in fact getting your inventory right is everything in this business you know we did a massive study on resiliency and retail and you know things like supply chain you know there were some unique supply chain issues in this last few years but longer term the ability to get your logistics right has always been a massive differentiator in retail Walmart for the longest time was sort of given this props for being this logistics machine, the ability to really understand its inventory, maximize and minimize its cost centers, its pricings, its optimization, what lands where. Well, with AI, it puts a lot of smaller retailers on the same plane as a company that had that mass data set of a company like Walmart. And so, um, Pat, I mean, even in, in this uh, press release that talked about Google, they talk about a number that Nielsen IQ said that on shelf availability, empty shelves cost US real dollars 82 billion in lost sales. 82 billion could fix a lot of balance sheets. It could fix a lot of retail stores. It could enable a lot of, um, of growth and scale. And last thing I'll say is people want retail experiences. People want to shop. If you ever want to, if you ever have a doubt, everyone out there that's a fan of the show, if you ever doubt, the power of a retail experience. Follow Pat to Aspen one of these times when he decides to take his family Christmas shopping, and you will see the power of retail experiences. 